And something I've talked about for years is that the whole growth space is kind of where quality was like 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. 50 years ago, if you'd said to somebody, tell me about your quality process, you know, before we had Deming and Duran and people that said, no, this is actually a methodology. People would have said things like, well, you know, we inspect carefully and we train a lot. And, you know, we look, we, we make sure we have people that can look at things. We didn't understand Six Sigma, black belts, you know, all that stuff. And I really think the whole growth uncertainty problem is um, at a moment where we're starting to realize there is a replicable disciplined methodology around it. And I think beyond bionics at the forefront of this, as is you know, people like Alex Osterwalder, who was on a few weeks ago, um, really sort of decoding that, that mysterious process. I mean, we don't have to be, you know, Steve Jobs in black turtlenecks to do this. <laughs> and we don't have to be 22 years old either, which is kind of encouraging. Um, so you talked in a recent blog about um, the Great Reset and the moment that we're in and that that sort of cautious you know cautious careful management is not really going to be fit for purpose right now and i'd love to just hear so what's the alternative you know what what does that look like and and how should people be thinking about the the management style the 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 practice of management right now well at a behavior level there's always like there's a there's, there's kind of three intertwined sort of mindsets that if you listen, obviously, to your research or Adam Grant, who's also an advisor to Bionic and others, around control bias, right? Normalcy bias and loss aversion. So central to this moment is, is the desire to control something, right? Um, we do this, whether it be retail therapy in our lives or it's, or it's around, um, you know, trying to get uh, our arms around this situation. And um, that control bias makes typically bad decisions right now because you're trying to control something that's not controllable and is changing. I see that a lot. Yeah. That and, a lot. and the other one is loss aversion, which is, you know, we're, we're trying to hang on to uh, our goals that we want to return to. And so that return is a, is a loss. And that loss aversion stops us from letting go and moving forward and grasping that next thing. And lastly, it's just normalcy. Like even for our own lives, those biases are sort of a, a, a potent cocktail and stop change. And so that leads to decision making that is about preservation. And the big to bigger skills that get us to the top right now um, of around doing that work at a systems level, that ability to operate at will, as you pointed out earlier, um, you know, the Six Sigma 30 years ago was not a thing, but today everyone does lean manufacturing Six Sigma, ERP, real time data. We've mastered the ability to operate at will. And it begs the question, which is, why can't we have, why can't we grow at will? Why can't we turn on growth today as, uh, as we could uh, just operate at will? That an unimaginable thing 30 years ago, I could take my domestic product and take it globally is, is table stakes, yeah. but growth is not. And so I think this moment is really about a couple pioneering companies work with 26 in the last seven years who now do this as a way of working. And uh, there's a lot, there's a, a thousand more <laughs> at least uh, who need to be able to get this capability across the whole organization so it can react and discover not just five times a year with a super expensive consulting firm saying, here's the future, but a thousand times a year as a way of working to increase the odds that they're there when it happens because growth lives in outside forces. 